All right, guys, it is Monday, May. Ah, this is Sunday. Damn it. All right, guys, this is Sunday, May 7th, uh, 2023. And I pretty much put my weekend minus a half a day. Uh, dog grooming appointment took half the half of my day away. I ran some errands and some other stuff, so. Uh, anyway, so technically I need to put in a half day, but it's one of them deals where I just wanted to see how far I could get in a full work week, which definitely didn't get as far as I wanted, and I knew I wouldn't, but I did come out here and work on it. And I'm still working on it today, probably gonna work on it tomorrow, although I think there may be rain tomorrow, I'll have to go back and look at the forecast. I looked at it early this morning when I got out of bed and robot walked in there to the, sit down at the computer, so wasn't fully awake yet. So I got the four-door pulled out today and strung my air hose and my extension cord out here. So every night when I break everything down and put everything back away, I use my leaf blower and I blow off the driveway from all the, you know, the debris and metal shavings and metal dust from grinding and all that kind of stuff and I blow it out there in the yard. So it's kind of nice every morning that I push the car out, I get back in here and it's everything's clean and fresh again and you know, all the tools are put up that I don't need. So, just makes it kind of nice, I think. Instead of walking out here into a big giant mess pile that I left the night before, you know what I mean? So, I dug in the uh, shed this morning, and I got my radiator out. Now, I'm going to touch on this again. This radiator was a gift. It was free. My cousin gave it to me. He had got it for his 55 hardtop project, and it's a V8 position radiator. He does have short water pump and all that stuff, but when we started putting his car together, he likes the radiator to be out here in the six cylinder position so you don't see down inside the core support when the radiator's back here, which I agree with him because every 55, six or seven I've built, I've put the radiator in the six cylinder position or run, I run long water pump stuff, just personal preference. But anyway, this is a V8 position radiator. So with the long water pump, and all that stuff, you can't put a V8 position radiator on there. Uh, it, you're, you don't have no room for a fan and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it might work and you could do a, uh, maybe a pusher fan on the front, but electric, I'm not doing that. I'm running a mechanical fan with a shroud and all that kind of stuff. So, this is one of them inexpensive eBay radiators, which my dad bought one that's identical to this one for a 56 Bel Air he used to have. And I've also got a friend of mine with a 57 that has this exact radiator in it, and neither one of them had cooling issues. They're both running, uh, both of those cars ran 350s. They were pretty much stock. But anyway, it was free. So I don't have to spend money on a radiator, so I don't mind. So I'm going to modify this to make it look better because obviously the bracket is backwards. Now I had already, like a year or two ago, I don't even remember how long ago it was, I had cut out some steel and kind of put it on. I just tacked it both sides, but they will be fully welded. But I basically position the radiator where I need it. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to figure out a way. I want to box in all of the side and box it in up here to where it goes into the radiator. Like with a sheet metal, it comes up with a 90 degree bend going into the radiator, not touching it, but close to it. So you can't see in there behind all this garbage. And most likely we'll have a piece coming out this way as well. But I just remembered I have an AC condenser to put on here. So I need to get that side of it figured out. So now I need to go dig out the AC compressor and I'm going to have to build some brackets because it comes with what looks like plumber's tape brackets and that's not going to fly. So I may end up, this may end up working out pretty good having this flange going this way because I can bend a, you know, use 90 degree brackets for that condenser and drill and tap this or drill holes in it, put nuts and bolts on it. So that is first thing I need. And you know, when you start mocking stuff up like I am, it's kind of getting to the point where a lot of the car will be built first before it's blown back apart and painted, which is a good thing. You don't have surprises that way, but I've got to put the vintage air kit, the box underneath the dash. And then I have to figure out all the hoses and the plumbing and all that. Gonna have to drill some holes in here, probably put rubber grommets and stuff in there. I'll figure that out when I get there for the hoses to come through this to go to the condenser and stuff. 
I got to figure out placement for my dryer, which I kind of got an idea of what I'm going to do, which I think would be kind of trick. I am going to uh, cut a spot out of the inner fender, just a small one right here. And I'm going to use a piece of muffler pipe split in half and I'm going to weld that back in there and then plate in the bottom. So it'll be like a sunk in indent for the dryer to set down in. It's not going to be tight. I want it nice and loose. I just want to like a pocket to where it looks like the inner fender was made for that in there. I got that idea from all the G bodies I've built through the years, uh, like Monte Carlos and Regals and Grand Nationals and stuff. They have when you take an inner fender out of one of them cars, they've got an indent, a pocket basically molded into the plastic inner fender for the dryer. I think that's kind of cool. So I'm going to try to do something like that. Also, have been looking for a, a really neat bracket to mount the AC dryer instead of the cheap Charlie one that comes with it. And I kind of come up with something after a couple hours goofing around off on the internet. Um, and I ordered a part that was $15. And I'm going to custom, customize the bracket that I bought and make it look like it's made for it. But it'll still be a trick custom part. So, I've got a lot of mock-up to do. So, <laughs> i got to tell you, I'm not... Uh, I still never did even finish welding in the square nuts on this side. But uh, I need to go ahead and do that because at this point, I need to get the front end mounted on the car with the inner fender on it and everything. And I need to go ahead and put the splash apron in because I need to make sure my splash apron curve under here doesn't interfere here. But I need that radiator pushed back as far as I can get it because I'm going to have a radiator, a condenser, and if there's any more room after that, I'm putting a transmission cooler on the front. So uh, you guys may not know this, but when you put your radiator in a six-cylinder position, you have very limited area for your hood latch. I'll show you on the hard top here. So pretty much a lot of the car needs to be built. See how the hood latch bracket right here? I am, I can't even get my finger between. I probably could, but I'd bend the fins on my radiator. So I am very limited, but I also have my radiator pulled out quite a bit. So on this car, uh, I can, you know, custom build all the stuff I need to build up here. But uh, on my last video, I touched up the idea or touched on the idea of taking old baffles with these beads in it and building a panel that will actually bolt on here and I want it to cover like come up here and go down and come around but of course I got to do the AC condenser stuff now too but anyway I'm going to drill and tap for like some little 832s like I drilled and tapped the radiator before for the transmission cooler bracket which is now not going to work because I have AC but anyway I want to build a nice cover where it hides all this goofiness and then I don't have to go in here and custom you know refix all this stuff so uh, it's just better i was originally going to cut off this whole tab the original tab and weld in a thick piece of plate you know kind of wide from the top to the bottom out here and then drill new holes but this way i kind of don't have to you know what i mean i'll just build nice little covers that hide everything but i gotta have the ac condenser and stuff first so with that being said i've got to go dig in my shed now and my shed is a disaster area. It is packed full, and uh, there's four motorcycles in there. So <laughs> it, it doesn't make it any easier, you know what I mean? I got the condenser out. This is pretty awesome. It is just about the perfect size, pretty much perfect size. But uh, so with me wanting to stack three things, you know, transmission cooler, AC condenser, and then have the radiator. It's gonna have that pretty thick out here. And of course, I don't want the stuff smashed to each other, and I'm not running those, you know, transmission cooler plastic ties through these fins, especially on that. I'm just not gonna do that. Um, I just come up with an idea, and I think it's gonna work pretty nice. A Little bit more work, but I don't care. I love fabricating stuff. I love it, especially when it's budget type stuff, when you don't have the money, you know, to just open up a catalog and buy parts. So I like to make things. All right, so I went out and dug out the power or transmission cooler and the bracket that I made. I made that bracket years ago. 
I think it was actually for another 55 I had. So, anyway, that bracket I made for this, and this is just made out of strap, and I just drilled holes in it and stuff for speed holes. So I went out and got the fan shroud. So the fan shroud, this is all going to have to be custom modded as well. Well, this is proof of why mock-up is key, which I still have more parts I'm going to be bolting on. So I put the horn on in its stock location, and I went ahead and bolted the coolant overflow tank back on. And when I put this up here, and about the position I'm going to mount it, with the way that these outlets and inlets are on this condenser, <laughs> I'm going to be, uh, you know, I pretty much got one little area to take them lines to, so it, uh, this is kind of getting there on, on it, trying to find the, the perfect spot for stuff, you know what I mean? So after bolting in the coolant overflow tank, I've got this area right here that's free and it's open straight back. The coolant bottle's probably, I don't know, like just to this side of this black line. So I've got this open spot, which I thought I would, you know, step bit holes in here and put grommets for the AC lines to go through. But that's going to be coming out and then going back up. So. I've pretty much got to figure out, you know, placement of this and all that kind of stuff. So I had mocked this up, mocked this up a long time ago. This is just a spare piece of 5 16 line. And I'd actually used it to hang parts on and paint for my hard top. But I will sand this down and paint it black so it kind of disappears at that point. But so far I've got it bent to where... That is the line, the metal line, that goes to the port down there. I'll connect it with a piece of rubber hose, but that goes pretty much like that. And the top, I don't have it, you know, I need to figure out more where I'm going to put it and all that kind of stuff, but I'm going to be using Billet Specialties line clamps, the aluminum ones, and drilling and tapping for two of them here for this to be firmly mounted to the core support. But when the core support and the inner fenders are painted the satin black, this will be painted the same color, that way it kind of disappears into it. I just need to figure out what I'm going to do up here at the top because I don't have a fitting for this. I'm going to have to go to the parts store to get one. And I just haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do. I can tell you one thing I may do is I may cut this core support, put two cuts here, and die grind this into a half circle on each side and lay a piece of pipe or tubing cut in half and then weld it all in there and it'll be a tunnel you know molded into it look for the line to pass through because there is the baffle of the hood that comes across here and I don't want to have any surprises there but I also put the fan shroud in there and the fan shroud itself when I push it down it, it'll actually bolt into the original holes on the core support for that but the one thing about it is where it was it's molded it's sagged in the center right here so I've got a space so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole here or in here somewhere close to this corner I'm going to drill a hole here and I'm going to put an L bracket in behind there and I'm going to plug weld it and uh, that way when the core support goes on the top of this will be forced up over the top of that piece of steel and I'll drill a hole and drill and tap that L bracket because the ones I have are pretty thick and I'll put some stainless allen buttons into that so that will be you know kept straight up against the course port instead of having it sag down like that and it's just two extra points of mounting and I'll do it on each side all right well I went and drug the fan out that I'd had stashed back for this and it's an old used fan, but it's solid steel and the blades are pretty thick. That's not a, it's not like the new fans that are steel center with a thin aluminum blade flex fan. I mean, although this might be a flex, I don't know that it's going to flex a whole lot. So 
to me I feel a little bit safer with this for air conditioning because it does it's not recommended to use a flex fan with air conditioning but anyway it's just about right I've got probably about the thickness of my fingers in between which a lot of this stuff will, will change as the car gets assembled for paint but you know that shroud may have to go up or down or something and I may have to space the fan in and out with a spacer it just depends but right now I'm just trying to trying to figure out placement and whether or not that I need to move the radiator back but I do feel pretty comfortable with using that fan it'll get of course blasted and painted but I wanted to use a clutch fan but it's not going to work the ones I have here uh, they're too big they're too big of a diameter so they don't fit in the shroud and I don't want to cut the shroud down because I'd lose this little bead that's in here and at that point it'll just you know get hot and warp and look like crap so I'm just going to use that fan right there. Should keep a stock 305 cool, you know what I mean? It's one thing about a 305, it's a, it doesn't need much of a cooling system to keep it cool, so... I'm happy with that. That'll work. But, you know, lots of variables, like I said. Uh, after final, you know, the body's painted and I put it back on the chassis and bolt it down and then you know, final mount the fenders with them aligned to the door after paint and everything, and then... All right, so I have actually... It, it's taken a lot of thought process to get to this point. Uh, so what I think I'm getting ready to do right now is uh, go to Tractor Supply or Lowe's, and I'm going to go through their, their bin where they have the strap. Uh, I want to price aluminum versus steel. I probably might just go with aluminum, but... I want to get some one inch wide strap. This is half inch wide strap. I'm going to get one inch wide, which is this width. And I'm basically going to get two strips to put across the front of the radiator. One up here, and there'll be one down here. So I'm going to drill and tap this bracket of the radiator because it stands off of that radiator pretty far. So with this heating up and expanding, I'm still going to have a little bit of room there. And I will drill and tap this to put you know, bolt the strap to this that's already on the radiator. So I'll have strap going across there. And it's basically for mounting for the top of that and the bottom of that on the condenser. Because this condenser is going to be placed pretty much dead middle of this radiator. Because it's just about the same size of the core as this radiator. So when I went to try to figure out how I wanted to use my old bracket that I made years ago, uh, for the power steering cooler or transmission cooler, I keep calling this power steering cooler, uh, which could be used for the same thing. But what I'm going to do is I, I've decided to, and I've already uh, mounted it up here, and uh, I've decided to move that transmission cooler down lower. The reason is the the grill opening on the car. It has a big mouth grill, which gets a lot of air through it. So I want that transmission cooler down here where it's getting mostly the air coming in, you know, from the radiator. Whereas if I had it mounted up high, you know, like three quarters of it would be above the grill. And it would have to rely on getting air through it from the fan pulling it. So if I mount it down low, I'm going to be getting all the airflow going down the road, going right straight into it to keep that transmission cooler cooler. So that's why I put it where I did. Now, the way I've got this set up with holes already drilled in it from a long time ago, it's actually too far over. So I'm going to re-drill new holes and move it up uh, right even with it, pretty much, maybe in just a hair. But it'll be uh, moved to about like that. So I'm going to cut off this end here and here and then re-drill holes again. So I'm going to, I've got a whole bunch of different rubber uh, adhesive stripping and all kinds of stuff so i'm going to mount rubber behind to sandwich between this bracket and this core because i don't want this wearing into them cores so i'm probably going to put spacers behind this to space it off just a little bit and then i'll have rubber you won't be able to see it it'll be a stick on rubber strip here and here to cushion that but what i'm going to do instead of having like when I redrill holes, I'll have to have bolts and nuts, which is going to take up space on the back. I'm going to go ahead and just use all thread, quarter by 20 all thread, and 
I'm going to cut them all the same length and I'm going to stick them in from the back side and sink them in just a little bit and then fully weld it on the back and grind it flush. So this will be studs welded into this. There will be studs sticking out. So when I go to put this transmission cooler on there, it will slide over the studs and then I'm going to use acorn nuts and lock washers to, to mount it on there. Now I'll paint this uh, shiny and, and new when I get to the restoration side of it. You know, when I get the car all painted and buffed and then start assembly, I'll clean this and scotch bright it down real good and then paint it so it looks new. Um, you know, it's going to be a lot of work making studs and welding them in and grinding and all that kind of stuff, but I don't really care. You know what I mean? It's, it, it's a custom made thing for the car and I think that's kind of cool. So, I'll be cutting these off. Alright, so I went to my local tractor supply and I found two pieces of aluminum strap here. So this is eighth inch by three quarter wide, 48 inches long. So that's pretty awesome. Those were $9.99 a piece, so 20 bucks. I did not expect to find something three quarters of an inch wide. I thought I was going to find half inch and one inch, but they had three quarter. So that's what I got. So I am going to be putting these, cutting them down, obviously, to fit the, the width of the radiator flange. And I'll, you know, cut them to where they fit, but I'll drill and tap the radiator here and here, and these will bolt on, and then the uh, condenser, I'm going to use the farthest out as I can mounting bolts out here. Uh, that way there's not a whole lot of center weight on it to cause it to flex in. If I, you know, bolt it in out here and out here, it'll be more stiff. You should get what I'm saying. So, anyway, I'll put a strip across there, strip across down here, and then I'll have to have holes drilled in them to mount the condenser with all its universal holes in the top and bottom to bolt to that so pretty cool I think now with me messing with different thicknesses of spacers and different things to use there is all kinds of stuff you could use so I don't really want to get online and order anything like obviously getting online you would find just about anything you could think of probably on there so I just want to do it with what's local to me or what I have around here so that way I can continue on with what I'm doing. But I did put one of them half inch long spacers in there and it's, I don't know, I think that's a little bit too high. I could grind them all down a little bit, but I think those, these right here will work just fine. And these were only like $1.19 or something for four of them. So that wasn't too expensive as a spacer. But the deciding factor is what I have here that I can use for a rubber isolator on the back of that bracket. And I've got all kinds of stuff. Got all kinds of rubber goodness here that I can use on something. That right there probably pretty good. So, that's just kind of thick. All kinds of goodies in here. Man, there's a... I mean, there's something for everything in here. use this because it's already here that's a that's a pretty soft seal it's not spongy by any means but it is squishy but I think that would make a great it's got 3m tape back on it so I know when I stick it on there it's going to be stuck but my idea was to stick a piece on the back of this like put a strip from here to here or on the back of that on the back of that this will be painted black this is black but that will be a good insulation uh, to keep this metal off of the core you know what I mean so I think that's what I'm gonna do gotta work pretty nice actually it's a uh... oh yeah that's perfect if, with it being thin like that, it won't be as noticeable, you know what I mean? Whereas if it was wide and out here, you'd see it if you was looking down at the top of it, you know what I mean? So, I think that'll work. 
No, it was awesome. It was right on top, too. Interesting. Well, I cut a little short one-inch piece off of the end of that. And I stuck it to the back of this right about there, if you can see that. Well, that is the perfect height, the perfect thickness of that. So that worked out really, really nice. That's pretty cool. That'll work. So I'm going to end up using the little uh, uh, stainless fender washers here. Or stainless <laughs> finishing washers, not fender washers. That one I don't have lined up with the hole. That washer, the spacer under there has got to go over, but... That's the only bolt I get in it right now, and it's just sitting in there. I don't even have a nut on the back of it. That's how I'm going to mount that. It's pretty cool. This is kind of fun, I guess. 